Hello, my loves. I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the connection, your energy, your um, subscribes, likes, shares, support of this channel and this message in the world, which will radically transform this abuse cycle and the trap of narcissistic abuse because we're dealing with it on a multidimensional level, spiritually, energetically, physically, emotionally, right? To come into our sovereignty, our true authentic self, our authentic power, and letting go of trauma in a, I believe, a revolutionary way. Um, I talked about many times, like, <laughs> you know, there was no solution for trauma. It was the biggest block. It was the most misunderstood thing on the planet, as was the truth behind narcissism, that we're being spun around in cycles of intellectualizing something. We're intellectualizing narcissism, treating it as something it's not. It's not just a personality disorder. It, it is a spiritual sickness that it starts with. Secondly, things like PTSD, you know, we're dealing with emotional issues in a in an intellectualized way where you can't solve PTSD or trauma on the level of the mind. So the more you try and reprogram your, gram your subconscious, deal with it, talk it out, it doesn't work. You've got to come into your body and your emotions and the body, you have an emotional body, not an emotional mind, which means you've got to process on the level of the body, understand how to connect with our emotions, right, so that we can actually process them healthily and come into our intuition and truth. Now, the irony about shame, and a lot of us, what's really going on is shame, is we, so the narcissist is doing terrible things and they don't feel ashamed. They don't have any guilt, no remorse. <laughs> they don't care at all. In fact, they actually put that smirk on and I don't, it was, <laughs> they put the smirk on and it's a win for them because every time they can siphon your energy in a way that causes you mainly pain because pain has a strong energetic charge although it's a low vibrational energy your charge when you're the energy charge that you put to pain is very long lasting and often in PTSD it's gonna you're gonna get flashbacks you're gonna remember it every time you think about it they're gonna connect you and um, we've got synap what's called synaptic connections which is like our brain is like a circuit board and anything that reminds us of something can trigger us into the response. So I sat with veterans for a long time, really had to study PTSD, but anything environmental can trigger a flashback, even a smell, because the brain is this circuit board and it just takes one little thing to fire the whole, the whole thing off, right? So I've got very effective, fast ways to help you come out of that. But... The irony of shame is they should be ashamed, but, in, but they project on us. So we're feeling ashamed of what they're doing. We carry the shame. They don't. They're projecting the shame that, that, that really belongs to them. Shame's a dangerous emotion. It's, it's appropriate. But the difference between guilt and shame is when we feel guilt, it's more like, we feel guilty for what we did. I said something wrong. I was a bit abrupt. <laughs> you know, I was in a bad move and I was a bit snappy with you. Something like that. I feel guilt about a behavior. What shame really means, um, the subconscious message, what we're energetically holding is I'm wrong. We feel on a core level, I'm wrong. I talked several times about how I wouldn't, I couldn't admit because of the cognitive distance that my parents abused me until I got to about 30. And Part of that was because I carried the shame that there was something wrong with me. They had made me believe it was to do with me. It was my fault that, you know, my true subconscious, I couldn't necessarily vocalise this at the time, but the true feeling and knowing I had in my body because of what had happened was that they wouldn't have done that if there wasn't something terrible about me. None of that made sense, obviously. Like, I'm an A-grade student, I'm shy, I'm quiet, I'm doing everything I can to try and make them love me, and, you know, none of it made sense. But logic doesn't come into emotional issues. So, again, intellectualising and using logic on things that are purely emotional is the wrong way round. So much of what hasn't been helping, yeah, maybe with the best intentions, I'm sure a lot of the time with the best intentions are, like, I keep talking about the root cause and the right tool. We've got to know the root cause of something and the right tool to use. So emotional issues cannot be dealt with on the level of the mind. That is a complete um, issue and a complete reason why 
PTSD cannot be dealt with on the level of the mind. Yeah? Shame is an emotional issue. Now, the beauty of it is <laughs> we're actually absolutely, I mean, genetically amazing when you really understand this because while we're adding complexity and the whole industry seems to be what kind of narcissist is it what degree is it it's like i'm drinking poison every day but instead of like understanding i'm drinking poison and i've got to put it down i want to take it to the lab and figure out well how much poison is in it how did it how did it make itself into poison does it really matter no it doesn't matter we've got to just be very very clear that when there's something unhealthy going on <laughs> we've got to stop drinking the poison stop intellectualizing things that are never going to solve the problem and coming into what it's really about and our emotional body our physical body is designed to clear this our bodies are designed to heal by the way even through any sickness your body actually wants to heal it can chemically produce right so like this is science as well like anything they give like a lot of the uh, drugs and stuff in hospital that they'll give for certain things your body can actually chemically create very similar um hormones or the effects of those types of drugs when it's healthy when it's balanced it can cure everything cancer is just when cells have turned against themselves it's imbalance that the problem is imbalance the whole time causes dis-ease dis-ease lack of ease lack of balance in the body so shame emotionally even though it's heavy and even a very heavy emotion can get processed but it has to be kind of processed and that just means kind of felt but when we've got the physical capacity that's why if you come into sovereign i'm doing a, I, I teach you first week first module is just coming into your body because like when you build capacity then you can process when you're overwhelmed you can't and what happens when a lot of people leave the narcissist is they get a flood of emotions that they're not got the capacity to process so i build capacity with you first i do it step by step then like module three which we're going into next week is but you can start at any point it's self-study self-paced we go into a heart healing trauma release it takes me to module three before I'll actually do the deep trauma release. So I don't just dive in there, I build your capacity first. So the challenge we've got with shame is at a core level, what our, our programming, our belief systems, that, and our belief systems literally in, um, influence everything we think, feel and act about ourselves, is that we're wrong. That's a huge one. Shame is that we believe at a core level we are wrong. Again, sovereignty is the, the way round that, where we start letting go of that. You know, forgiveness is just letting go. That's all forgiveness is, yeah? When I want to forgive another person, I don't necessarily need to forgive the behaviour. I can still decide that behaviour is totally unacceptable. But what I can choose to do is set us both free. And I say that often in my mind, I'm like, I set us both free. I, le I, I release you to your good and I accept mine now. I release all the attachments to it. It's a setting free forgiveness, true forgiveness. It's not, um, I have to be okay with the behavior. But the shame is, it's not the truth. Shame is never the truth. Because as a, as a child of God, you are never at core level wrong. You're as pure and innocent as the day you were born. You're a human being in an environment where often you've been given and had to deal with things you weren't equipped to deal with, you didn't know how to deal with, and you were doing your best, right? And so we have to lose the idea that at core level, we're inherently wrong. There's something inherently wrong with this. And this is how, so again, I talked in another video about the distortions the narcissist puts in your mind. And one of them is, well, they are the three words. They distort your perception of reality, which means like how the world works for you, how things get to be for you. They distort your perception of yourself, who you are, what you get to do, be and have. And they distort your perception of them in an illusion of their, something that they're very much not. <laughs> right? So shame's a very heavy emotion, but it's heavier than guilt because guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am wrong. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's not true. They, they, you're not wrong. You can't be wrong, right? You're not wrong. 
there's nothing wrong with you. And that's the thing I think I would just like to say on it and this thing. I do do, do deeper work with people. And of course, if you come into something, I, I, I go deeper. But the first thing that it will help you is just to know there's nothing wrong with you. There's a couple of videos where I talk about there's no mud on you. I talk about the lotus. So the lotus flower is like the most iridescent. It looks like a pearl. Um, it grows in Asia. And it's like... It's quite a big flower. It's it's a quite, it looks not like a it's quite, you might you've probably seen lotuses, but if you haven't, it, it looks almost like a bud. Like, but it grows in like the swamps, in the crap, yeah, in the muddiest, thickest, densest um, rivers and stuff. But the lotus is kind of honoured in a lot of religions um, in Asian culture because when it rises to the top. The, so it rises uh, to the top of the uh, swamp and when it rises it's so like it's very they're very light petals and things it's so beautiful it's iridescent right it's so pure there's no mud on it and that's why I keep saying as part of this there's no mud on you there's nothing anyone can do to you I know they violated you I know they violate your boundaries you, often your bodies they violate every part of you your body mind and soul right and you can still come back into yourself and know there's no mud on me and there's no mud on you. There's none. There's nothing anyone can do to, once you shake it off, once you decide, you know, to shake that off and understand the truth that you cannot be tarnished, you cannot be violated. You are as pure and as beautiful as the day you were born at core, at source. And in God's eyes, there's no mud on you and there's no mud on me, right? At that point, yeah, it's got no attachment to you. They want you to feel like you're somehow ruined, tarnished, destroyed. They want you to feel like that. But it's not the truth. The ultimate truth is there's nothing they can actually do to, at core level, make you any less beautiful, any less loving, any less pure than you already were when, the day you were born, right? Because you want to, you're in your heart, you are that pure. No one can actually touch you. No one can distort you. No one can take that away from you. I know it sounds big, but honestly, it's the truth. So just bear with me on it. So shame, yes, we've got to dissolve it. But the first part is just what I'm talking about. Understand forgiveness is just, let, it's just um, I set you free. I set us both free. It's, it's a letting go. It's not, I have to spend hours trying to be okay with this behaviour. You never, ever have to be okay with that behaviour. I'm not, ever. And I'll never forget what happened to me, ever. That would be denying my entire reality and my truth, which is what narcissists always do. But I'm not hiding it, right? What, does, what actually um, dispels shame is truth. And here we're sharing the truth. I love, I've seen some of you in the comments sharing some intimate things that have happened to you. Good for you. In a safe container, I'm not, don't do it in unsafe places. I'm very vigilant here about keeping the energy clean, right? I will take absolutely no tolerance to anything that I think is bullying, anything that's designed to bring anyone here down. If it's coming from a pure intent to learn, to grow, to discuss, to share truths, to come together in our highest good, I'd like you to ask yourself all the time, is it good for me, for them and the highest good? Do not hold back. I'm into expression, authentic expression. It's not to hold back, but it's like, how can I say this in a way that I know is positive for me, for you and for the whole? Right. We're not fighting to be right here. Um, and if I see it, you know, no one's doing this. But like if, if anyone, if the intention is to be right to, and bring someone down to try and make yourself right over them, you're too in your ego. You're not ready for this. You're not ready yet. Yeah, that's the narcissist. Totally ego. That doesn't mean you're a narcissist. It means that I need you to come from a purer place, which is that. Yeah, I get to have my entire truth and I won't have it taken away from me ever again. But you also get to stand in your truth. Yeah. And we're allowed to both be in those truths and where they can come together, I say like come together and make babies, that's lovely. They can make love and grow. That's awesome. And where they can't, it gets to be honoured. I don't have to be right over you, but I don't have to let go of my truth because you have a different view either. Right. And I've got a different role because I am leading you into an elevation, which means that like, again, but I don't, you don't have to agree with everything I say or do. There'll be things that you don't, maybe don't like about me. That's totally okay. You can, you get to learn from me. I'm not perfect. I'm not supposed to be. And we can learn from each other without putting all this like, well, they should be perfect. They shouldn't swear. They should forget your preconceptions, right? Let's understand each other that we get to be imperfect human beings and also add massive value to each other's lives. And that I get to hold space for me and for you, right? And where we can come together and align, that's amazing. 
yeah? Because if I believe something and can hold something that you think, oh, I don't believe that, but if I did, my life would be better, then join it. I do have a high elevation of consciousness, which means that I've got some beliefs that you might want to say, huh, I wouldn't mind calibrating to that. Right, so part of what happens here is I help you sync up to love, to a higher vibration, so that you can actually adopt different uh, consciousness, right? So you can say, oh, actually, yeah, I prefer to believe that than what I'm believing. That feels more true to me. That feels more, uh, that feels like truth. I'll take that, you know? And you're able to start reprogramming yourself. But there's anything you don't like, you haven't got to take it, but you don't have to fight anyone over it. We haven't got to prove it to each other. Let's just... Uh, <laughs> work out ways in which we can build each other up, not bring us down. But that doesn't mean we have to agree. You haven't got to agree with someone, right? You can say, I like that parts of it. This is kind of how I feel. Or if you only have something to say that would bring someone down, you don't need to say it. You don't need to say it. If it's productive, if it's like, huh, I want to learn more. So, you know, there's a different energy to that. There's a different energy to a leading edge conversation, which is what we're running here. A leading edge conversation that no one's saying, that no one's actually calling out. Where it's not like calling out to hurt anyone. It's just like stepping into a truth where we get to be activated in it, curious in it. There's a place for you in it. There's a place for your truth and your differences and, and your learning and your growth in it, right? But we can do that in a way that's good for me, that's good for you and good for the whole. That's the intention here, right? That it's all to build us up ultimately. And there's no way we all have to agree for that. In fact, the more you can let everyone be themselves, the more you are free and energetically a match for you being yourself. Shame is one where... We haven't got to make it a big deal. We've got to understand it. Everything I teach is how do we understand spiritual principle, energetic principle, and lots of things, lots of things at core, right? So we cut the crap and we actually start changing things, transforming things. And so the thing to understand about shame is that the subconscious programming that happens there is there's something wrong with me. I am wrong. And when we've been forced into lowering our boundaries and values, we start, there's another layer to this that I go into in personal development, but it's like, we start attaching our identity to it, you know? So now we're, we're detached from our own values and integrity. And not only that, we've now identified ourselves with those shameful things. And we think it's who we are. It's not who you are. There's no mud on you. You get to come back into, hang on, in my true heart, in my true authenticity, what, what, are, what is my truth? Not what I've done. Not what's been done to me, not what I've made it mean, not what I've made it believe about me, not who I now think I am. Who am I beyond that? Right? That's kind of it. But again, that's the thing to kind of overall know. So keep commenting. Please um, share, subscribe. Keep commenting. Give me your feedback. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking about it. I am. I'm going to give you what you need rather than what you think you want a lot of the time. But I will cover stuff and I'll explain why it covers it. Because again, I go to the root cause. Most of what people think about is the symptom of something. It's not the cause. When I when I get you at the root cause, changing, then all those things take care of themselves. You see. Lots of love, guys. I'll speak to you soon.